I'm in your quarter for Queen. I'm 49 years old, a professional teacher, and a professional broadcast journalist, and a sickle cell patient. 49 years living with sickle cell disease and 17 years of marriage. Ama Nyako Atifa Kwenu is a teacher at Kumasi Senior High Technical School. She has been teaching a number of subjects for 24 years. First, let's take her down memory lane in her teaching career. There was the student that I had when I was teaching them at KSTS. I, I taught them in Form 2 and then in Form 3, he was a bully. Very thick, tall, and if you are not careful, even if you are a teacher, he can bully you. He wouldn't come to class on time, and he does what he wants. So when I was introduced to the class to teach them, I teach business management, so I teach business students. He came in late, and then I asked him, where are you coming from? And the way he just stood there and looked at me from, top to down. I said, wow, you'll be a good bodyguard. So from today on was, you are going to be my bodyguard. Because I had heard about his attitude towards teachers and his fellow students. When I said that, he was surprised. And since that day, he never mixed my class. Mrs. Atifa Quinu was born with sickle cell disease. It causes the blood cells to become rigid and sickle shape. It can be totally out of control. In the case of Mrs. Atifa Quinu, the situation was worse. I would say I'm a smart person because at the age of 12, I entered secondary school. I did a common entrance and I passed and I entered secondary school. So um, I'm not a dull person, but because of sickle cell, it took me six years instead of five years to finish the O level. When I was in Form 2, almost the whole year I was hospitalized because I was getting crisis on and off. I was getting crisis on and off. Mrs. Atifa Quinu's younger brother, Kwesi Sapong, was unable to survive the disease. He died when he was 12. I and my brother, who was just behind me, we were different among our siblings. We were sickle cell patients. Unfortunately, he died at the age of 12. But God being so good, I'm still here. If you are not careful, you will think that you are cursed because at the end of the month, you'll be buying drugs. You receive your salary, you have to buy drugs. You have to go to the hospital. Well, I can't quantify for a month because it depends on how often you buy them. But at the moment, I have issues, I have complications. So I spent about 500 thereabouts buying multivitamin, buying um, painkillers, buying supplements. Her parents, Reverend Joseph Harry of Osuhini and Mrs. Fortune of Osuhini, are sickle cell carriers. Both are now 71 and 66 years old, respectively. No, both of them are carriers. Both of them are carriers. So I and my brother were sickless. The rest of my siblings are also carriers. So I got to know it early in life and I've been managing it. Though, no matter how you manage it, sometimes you get the complications, as I have now, but you have to deal with it. Yeah. People yeah. living with sickle cell disease describe pain crisis, but Mrs. Atifa Quinu does not let the disease define her potentials. As I have a lot to be grateful of. I have a loving family. I have colleagues at the workplace who support me. So why do I think of that? I would say that I have been lucky, but there are people who are sometimes suicidal. I had a friend who is also a sickle cell patient. Unfortunately, he's dead now. He died in 2020 during the lockdown. He had the most extreme sickle cell I've come across. He had skin cancers on his legs, both legs, for more than 10 years. 
amid the uncertainty around cultivating relationships and even marriage, she has found an everlasting love and remains hopeful that what she is made of cannot break her into pieces. Her husband, 53-year-old Peter Atifa Quinu, celebrates her strength, resilience, and potentials. I am married. I have a husband, a very loving husband, who has been supportive, very supportive. In fact, I can do the things I do because of his help. God has blessed me with two children, a boy and a girl. I, I, I have no regrets at all. In fact, I, I am privileged to have her as a wife because she's just an amazing woman. My husband is AE, so both of them are carriers. Though my boy, the doctors are saying his S is dominant, so sometimes he uh, complains of pains uh, around his wrist and then his feet, but he's okay. With the carriers, we are okay, but when you are going to marry, you need to get somebody who is AA, so that your children will be okay. Because if you marry somebody who is also AS, like my parents did, the possibility of you giving birth to a sickle cell patient is, is high. When the blood can move, it affects the area the blood is moving to. Dr. Cosmos Bimpong is a medical scientist at Siemens Herbal Clinic. So normally it affects the chest area, which sometimes people suffer from pneumonia, rheumatic, rheumatism and stuff. It affects the bones, the joints. It also causes people not to grow well. Because when there is lack of nutrients supply the stem, if it can't grow properly, it normally affects um, the vital organs, like I was mentioning earlier, the liver, the kidney. And what is most important is normally those people with sickle cell disease become very anemic. Sickle cell disease is a major public health problem in Africa with over 200,000 babies born per year. About 15,000 of Ghanaian newborns are diagnosed with sickle cell disease annually because of the stigma associated with the disease. Most individuals with sickle cell hide it, but rather than negativity, Mrs. Atifa Quinu says people need to understand the disease. And sometimes you go to clinic and you meet people who are sickle cell patients who have no idea about the disease. Their parents have no idea about the disease. All that they know is their children frequently get sick and they bring them to the hospital. So in 2013, I started thinking about it. And I, I picked a form and I registered an NGO. So in 2014, June, around June, we launched it. And then we started the ANAC Foundation, where we go to schools, we go to communities, we go to churches, and then we educate people on sickle cell. And then nutrition. Nutrition because I realized that growing up, anytime my diet changes, I get crisis. She encourages sickle cell patients to be their own advocates Mama. and allow their resilience to inspire others. A report by Mohamed Nuruddin.